Fucking main event time here at the Dynasty Typewriter. Uh, I love this guy. I'm sure you at least like him like him because you're here. <laughs> Extremely funny dude. Uh, he's on Conan all the time. He's got a little podcast called We Watch Wrestling. Put your hands together for Matt McCarthy. <laughs> Uh, good evening. <coughs> I am Matt McCarthy. Uh, I am married. Back off, whores! Oh, back off! With the whores! Oh, God! Well, yeah. To here with the... Oh God. oh, God, I wish I could put my wedding band on my middle finger so you whores We get the message. God. Good evening. Um, <laughs> yes, I am married. I have a, uh, I have a four-year-old boy at home. Um, at least I think that's where he is. I don't know. I don't, go. I don't give a fuck. That's, I don't know. That's where he was when I left. Three and a half years ago when I left. When I went to go get cigarettes. Still haven't. I can't find my brand. I don't know. No, I love him. It's great. Uh, I love him. I've lear I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot about people, about myself. Uh, I learned a lot just during the pregnancy. Uh, learned a lot about women. Uh, pregnancy <laughs> makes women horny. I don't know if you guys know this. You know that? That's a medical fact. Isn't that, isn't that a fun fact? My wife would say to me things like, Matt, the baby's kicking. Come feel it. No, lower. <laughs> Grow up. Grow up. Ah. You're somebody's mom. Why don't you grow up? <laughs> grow up, mom. Put it away. That's how we got in this mess to begin with. Uh, my son's original due date was my birthday. We were going to have the same birthday. Yeah, that was really exciting to know that I had sex on the same day as my parents. And I <laughs> carry that with me. What a fun thing to know. <laughs> Math, it's just it's something in the air in late February it makes McCarthy men bone. Yeah, he's a fun little reminder of that. I love it. So yeah, I'm in charge of a person. I gotta, I gotta tell him what to do. I gotta tell him what not to do. I gotta tell this kid not to do drugs. Which is awkward. <laughs> All the drugs that I've done. Who am I? I'm just gonna give him advice. I'm just gonna sit him down one day and be like, look, just don't do mushrooms alone. Just don't. Just find a group of guys. Share the experience with your peers. It's a group activity. I've done mushrooms alone way too many times. Way too, did you know that once is already, it's already way too many times. <laughs> and I kept going back to the well and it was empty. Just the well was dry every time I went. I'd be like, I'd lower down the bucket, be like, this, this time I'm not gonna freak out. And I'd pull up the bucket. Oh no, the bucket's a snake, I'm freaking out! <laughs> mushrooms! I did mushrooms all by myself once, and uh, I had all the lights off in my room, and <laughs> for 45 minutes, all I did was stare at the floor and think about how disappointed my parents would be if they could see what I was doing. That's, that's a waste of 60 bucks, I don't care. 
<laughs> I don't care how many clients you have. I don't care what you do for a living. That's a waste of six. Just take three twenties and throw them in a fire. It'll be a more enjoyable experience. <laughs> that wasn't even the worst time. The worst time I had on mushrooms, um, I was at the Bonnaroo Music and Arts Festival. Uh -huh. Uh, the middle of a field in Tennessee in the middle of the summer, 101 degrees outside. And I'm like, you know what this needs? Drugs. <laughs> so I take the mushrooms, and as soon as they kicked in, my brain said, hey, you're on mushrooms again. And then my body said, you have to poop so bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I get in line for the porter potties. It's... It's 101 degrees, kids, outside of the porter potties, inside. Oh, we're looking at a buck nine, buck ten, <laughs> easily. And so I, I'm inside the porter potty, pouring sweat, miserable. And 15 minutes, I could still read my watch, 15 <laughs> minutes into trying to remember how to wipe my bum. I could not figure it out for the life of me. I don't. I was so confused. I was like, what, what, what is happening? <laughs> to the point where, honest to God, out loud, I said, why is this going so badly? <laughs> I said that. I said that out loud. <laughs> and then suddenly I remembered, I was like, oh, you're on mushrooms. <laughs> oh, that's what's been going on this whole time. You don't live in this weird little room. <laughs> you can leave anytime you want. This stinky, awful, hot room. This isn't your reality. And then I suddenly remembered how to wipe my bum. It was incredible. So if you have a problem, say it out loud. The universe will help you. These are just parenting tips. These are things I'm gonna explain to my son. I honestly, I think I only really had like one good time doing mushrooms. I was camping with two friends. Me and my friend Steve took mushrooms, and our friend John was like, you guys are taking mushrooms? That's so lame. I'm gonna drink a bottle of whiskey and pass out. So he, <laughs> he passes out in front of the raging fire we set. Oh, did I mention the raging fire we set? <laughs> and now two dicks on mushrooms are the responsible ones, so. And we take the mushrooms. As soon as they kicked in, my buddy Steve, he grabbed me by both shoulders and he goes, I think we need to separate. And then he ran into the darkness. <laughs> so there I am, alone, tripping balls, in the woods, in the dark, in front of a raging fire. And then I look down and I'm like, oh my God, that's a dead body. That's not... <laughs> That's not my friend John anymore, that's evidence. Oh no, oh no, that's evidence of a crime. They're gonna pin the crime on me. Oh no, what do I do? I gotta get rid of the evidence. I gotta push this guy into the fire. And then I, and then I stop for a second, I'm like, wait a second, drugs, that sounds like a bad idea. This sounds like one of those bad ideas I keep reading about. So I'm like, all right, why don't I calm down? I'll, I'll, I'll look up at the stars. I was like, maybe I'll see a UFO. I was like, I'm on mushrooms, maybe I'll see a UFO. So I look up at the sky, I'm not making this up. I see the dead comedian, Bill Hicks, <laughs> form in the clouds above me and like soar over my head. And then my friend Steve comes running back from the darkness and he goes, McCarthy, I just had a conversation with the color orange. <laughs> so we both met our heroes. <laughs> Yep, yep. Yeah. I actually have a couple years sober, and sometimes I'll go to meetings, and I have no choice but to bring a four-year-old boy with me. And it's great. He doesn't know what's going on. He watches superheroes on my phone. He's got headphones on. He loves it. He doesn't know what's going on. But he's got incredible timing. <laughs> like, once in a while, a guy would be like, you know, I woke up this morning, and I started thinking, and then my son will go, uh-oh! <laughs> Like, 
this kid gets it. This kid, this kid gets it. He hasn't even done his steps yet. And this kid, he sees it all. And then like, I'll get embarrassed. And I like lift up his headphones and I'm like, will you sponsor me? Cause I'm like, this kid gets it. This is generally where my problem is. Just in this general area. My, it generally on the other side of this ear over to this year, the other that's is essentially where my problem is. I tell you, I notice it the most when I'm driving my car. It ha I, 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 the drive over here, I, I'm, I'm driving my car, and I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, you don't like when people cut you off. I'm like, doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to me. I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. Some maniac is driving around like a maniac. Doesn't matter to me. Cuts me off. Doesn't matter to me. Flips me nut. Doesn't matter to me. I still want to watch him die, but it doesn't <laughs> matter to me. But I just don't. I want to see the like the explosion on the like pff, on the horizon. I just want to see that, and I just want to like drive by the fire, roll down my window, and like have a car from the '70s. So I have to slowly <laughs> roll it down and just like warm up my hands on the fire and be like, "Yeah, that's exactly what you get." <laughs> but it doesn't matter to me. I'm just. No, what makes me crazy is when, uh, if I'm driving and I see somebody in my rear view and they just like slowly get into the next lane and then they just very slowly, like at a reasonable, re like speed limit speed, just like slowly pass me and then just like casually get in front of me in the lane. Then I'm like, oh, oh, you think you're better than me? Now it's on. Now I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna follow you wherever it is you're going. I'm gonna follow you and I'm gonna end this. I don't care how it ends, but I'm gonna end it. I don't care which one of us it ends for. It could be you or it could be me. I just want this pain to stop. And then my wife will turn to me and be like, we have to drive the baby to the dentist. And I'm like, what? Why are you on this guy's side? I just want this to end. And you're like, and the baby at the dent, these aren't even his permanent teeth. Why are you on this guy's side? I don't like you. I'm very sensitive. <laughs> that happened on the drive here. We were <laughs> taking the baby to the dentist. I'm so close to um, a new therapist. I really feel <laughs> like, like I'm gonna find the perfect one. You know what I mean? I don't know. Some of you look like you could be therapists. There's like a lot of glasses <laughs> and shirts. There's a lot of, if you, yeah, a shirt. If you walk in and they're not wearing a shirt, that's like, that's a bad sign. <laughs> like you paid for the hour, but don't go back. That's what I say. Glasses and shirts. <laughs> first therapist I ever went to, um, I walk in, I sit down. The fir first words out of my mouth, I say to her, I'm like, I don't know what's going on with me. Like, I think I might have a drinking problem. I definitely smoke pot all day, every day. And she goes, well, what about food? Do you have an issue with food? I'm like, oh, so now I'm fat. <laughs> is that what it is, lady? Oh, I'm a fatty, fatty, fat, fat, huh? I came here for help. You know, one of these Big Macs was for you, but now you're gonna watch me eat them both. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Find a new therapist. <sighs> I just, I'm, I'm just so goddamn selfish. That's what it comes down to, I realize. Here's a great example. I'm sitting on the couch, thinking about myself, and <laughs> my wife comes in and just interrupts. <laughs> and she's like, uh, she's like, Matt, you wanna go to Target? I'm gonna go to Target with the baby. I'm like, yeah, I'll go to Target with you and the boy. Let's go to Target. I'm gonna be an amazing husband to you. I'm gonna be an amazing dad to him. We're gonna go to Target together, like a family. Target. That's where families go. 
So she's like, great, I'll go get in the car and get the kid in the car seat. And I'm like, great, let me run to the bathroom real quick. She's like, great. I'm like, great. And we're like, wonder twins, form of a healthy couple. Activate. <laughs> Push our wedding rings together. I did it. So she takes the kid out to the car. I go to the bathroom and I decide, well, clearly, this is the perfect time to masturbate. So I take, take out my internet phone and I go to a pornographic website. Have you guys seen these things? They're everywhere. We got to do something. We got to write a letter to somebody. So I'm watching the pornographic video, and there's no sound on it, but I'm like, this is more of a visual thing. I'm in a rush. I'm like, like what, am I going to get thrown off? Like, no, I can figure it out. Like, <laughs> I need to know who they are, how they met. Like, no, let's just let's do this. So I finish, I, I get out of the bathroom and I'm putting on my coat and I get, a, I get a text from my wife and she writes, um, she wrote the word, um. That's a bad sign. <laughs> Throw, um, dot, dot, dot. The Bluetooth on your phone connected to the radio in the car. Target without you. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm on her side. Like, yeah, I got some thinking to do. You guys, you guys go to Target. What a, what a wonderful gift I got that day, huh? So the two things I learned from that are... Uh, now when I masturbate, I turn off the Bluetooth on my phone. <laughs> That's the first thing I do. The second thing I do is I make sure my family's not waiting for me. <laughs> it's still the second thing I check. So I'm like, I have some work to do. <clears throat> Did it start raining again? Is it gonna just keep raining? Are we gonna drown and die? Why does it keep raining? I love how... <laughs> I love how every time it rains, like suddenly worms and snails think they run the show. You ever <laughs> notice that? Like you walk around and there's like a worm that's like, your time is up, my time is now. <laughs> Always like that. <coughs> I like this place. It's old. I like performing in like old bars. I love any, I love any place where like, like a bar where they like brag about some like famous writer that used to drink there. I always love that. They're like, hey, hey, you know Edgar Allan Poe? Edgar Allan Poe? E Ed Edgar? Allen? Poe? E-A-P? Yap? Edgar Allan Poe used to drink here all the time. All the time. Like, oh, you mean that writer that died penniless and drunk? We did that! <laughs> that was us! That was us! He died right where you're standing, as a matter of fact. Drop dead. It's all in the plaque. Did you read the plaque? We put up a plaque while the body was still warm. We saw it coming. It's all in the plaque. It's like he fell down and we were just like, like three screws. And then somebody checked him and then we put in the last one. It's all in the plaque. You should try a Red Gallon Poe uh, drink special. It's a shot of absinthe and then a raven follows you around for the rest of your life. <laughs> the tourists like it. <clears throat> I had jury duty, I had jury duty and I went and just sat there all day. I didn't get picked. None of us got picked. It was like the perfect jury duty. Um, at one point I fell asleep and I woke up and everybody was like friends. 
And I was like, oh, oh, oh. When did that happen? You waited. You waited till I was asleep. Um, the best part of jury duty sitting in the room all day was I got to hear everybody's lame excuses to see if they were like exempt from jury duty. It's like just you're here. Just you're not. You're here. You're doing it right now. But uh, people kept like, and the the woman running the room, uh, she'd heard it all before. That's all she does all day. It was it was amazing watching her just just do battle. So highlights include, but are not limited to. <laughs> Uh, the guy sitting directly behind me, right behind me, the seat behind me, I couldn't see him at all. He puts up his hand, he goes, yeah, I'm on trial right now for domestic violence. Do I gotta be here? <laughs> you ever, you ever wanna turn around so badly, but don't? <laughs> Just like. My chin is really itchy right here. <laughs> and I couldn't see him. I couldn't get a good look at him. He's still out there. Watch out. Watch out, everybody. The woman ran the room. She'd heard it all before. It was a thing of beauty. She goes, uh, were you convicted of a felony? And he goes, no. She goes, then you're not exempt. Only if you've been convicted of a felony. Only if you've been convicted of a felony, everyone. I'm not making this up. A guy on the other side of the room goes, what if you have a felony pending? <laughs> Learning a lot about each other today. <laughs> my favorite, though, my absolute favorite was a um, woman in the middle of the room she goes, what if you can't understand English good? And I was like, e extra points for phrasing it wrong. Good for you. I see what you did. Woman around the room, she heard it all. She's like, are you a citizen? Yes. Then you took an English exam to become a citizen. You understand it fine. The 65-year-old Mexican woman sitting next to me, we didn't talk the entire day. She turns to me and goes, <laughs> <laughs> so, we're best friends. <laughs> we poke each other on Facebook. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. I love pro wrestling. Anybody here love pro wrestling? Yes. It's the best, right? There's, okay, that was kind of an icy response. There's... <laughs> The whole theater people, two of them. Yes. <laughs> That's all right. That's the icy cold response I've come to expect. I love pro wrestling. I love it. <coughs> Absolutely love it. Somebody said to me once, Matt, why don't you explain to me why you love wrestling so much? And I was like, oh, should I explain sunsets to you while I'm at it? <laughs> Should I explain, like, puppy dogs to you? <laughs> and they're same person, they were like, Matt, you like pro wrestling, do you also like MMA? I'm like, mixed martial arts? No, I don't like MMA. Why would I want to watch them actually hurt each other? <laughs> what am I, an asshole? <laughs> Fuck. Then I gotta deal with guys like Joe Rogan who are like, oh, MMA, way better than pro wrestling. Why would you watch a fake fight when you can watch a real one? I'm like, I don't know, Joe. Why would I watch news radio when I can listen to news on the radio? <laughs> Explain that to me, bro Brogan. Huh? You're too busy doing ayahuasca? We're worried about you, Joe. I'm raising my son to be a, a, a pro wrestling fan because I want my son to be a good person, okay? <laughs> because that's what pro wrestling teaches you. Good versus evil, right versus wrong. The little guy fighting the big guy. It's the pursuit of justice, putting right what has once went wrong. It's a lot like Quantum Leap. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, that's what I want. I don't want my kid to just be some selfish sports fan just rooting for themselves. Because uh, you know the type. Just like, oh, my city, my team, my jersey, me, 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 me. Just you're rooting for yourself enough. Root for something real. That's what pro wrestling gives you. It's true. I love it. Some guy's like, oh, we got a great team this year. No, we don't. We're not on the team. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, no, it's my team. It's not your team. You don't run the team. You got nothing to do with the team. You couldn't be less involved. <laughs> you talk about they represent my city. No, they don't represent your city. That's what's fake. This whole city sports thing. It's a fucking crock of shit. If they actually represented your city, the LA Rams couldn't have been in St. Louis for the last 35 years. <laughs> And now they're back? They're back? Like some deadbeat dad who found out we're rich? I missed you, buddy. I missed you the whole time. I was thinking about you the whole time. I was in St. Louis. I missed you, buddy. When's the stadium gonna be done? I missed you. You know, the whole time I was in St. Louis, I had a poster of Rita Hayworth on the wall, but underneath it was a Hollywood sign. Love you, buddy. <laughs> oh, man, none of that. <clears throat> this, 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 this is the way, like, like if you're going to root for sports, I don't give a shit, you know? It's like, this is the way a sports fan should act. Like, ah, we lost. We'll get them next time. This is the way they actually act. I'm going to kill you and your family! <laughs> like, oh, my God. Like, that is never gonna happen at a wrestling show, okay? You know, you're never, like, WWE is not gonna be at the Staples Center and the next day in the paper, you're gonna see, like, three pro wrestling fans beat up a young man wearing a Hulk Hogan T-shirt <laughs> because they were Andre the Giant fans. He's clinging to life. That's just not, it's not, it's not gonna happen. Oh, man. There are certain, rules that you have to adhere to if you're going to be a pro wrestling fan. Um, like rule number one, never say never. Anything can happen. <laughs> Anything can happen. Every wrestler ever is behind the curtain. Did you guys know that? It's true. <laughs> you don't know who's coming out. That's never going to happen during the Super Bowl. Like you're not going to be watching the game and the announcers are like, well, they're on the 35-yard line. It's 4-10. and 10. Looks like they're going to... Wait a second. What the heck is this? Joe Montana's running on the field. What the hell is he doing here? He's got no business here. Joe, he's inserting himself into the game. Enough's enough, Joe. Somebody stop the damn Super Bowl. It's not... That's just not going to happen. No. Rule number two, boo the heel. What is a heel? You will know him by his wrongdoing. <laughs> Rule number three, cheer the baby face. For he represents everything that is good within us. <laughs> Next rule, stay on the goddamn referee. These are the most incompetent buffoons <laughs> who disgrace themselves and the uniform on a nightly basis. It's like, ref, I'm begging you, watch the damn match, turn around, they're super kicking everybody! <laughs> so help them out wherever you can. And the final rule of being a pro wrestling fan is to stand tall. You're not a mark, you're a beautiful snowflake. Okay? <laughs> and remember that. Because there's a lot of people who give you shit about being a wrestling fan. You know? I'll, like... Typically, it's, it's, it's one of three things that you get met with. Uh, and I'll address them one at a time, but I mean, <laughs> you know, it's always something like, oh, it's fake, it's gay, it was better when I was 12. <laughs> and I'll, you know, if, if, if you're pressed for time or you just want to shut it down quickly, just shut it down quickly. Just, just be like, you're fake, you're gay, you were, be you were better when you were 12. <laughs> It'll be correct in every instance. <laughs> like, oh, pro wrestling is fake. Oh, you're the one who figured it out? I read about you in history class. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, you did it. Nancy Drew solves another one. 
look at you. You figured out wrestling is fake. Of course it's fake. It's on TV. Everything on TV is fake. Come on. Like, oh, what's your favorite show? Oh, it's fake. <laughs> Oh, pro wrestling is fake? Okay, switch it to HBO so we can see what the dragons are doing. <laughs> Please. Come on. Everything is fake. The fucking president says the news is fake. Explain that to me. Everything is fake. Every movie you've ever seen is fake. Every doc especially the documentaries are fake. Every play you've ever read in school is fake. Every play you've ever seen is fake. Every play that Shakespeare ever wrote Fake. Shakespeare. Shakespeare is fake. <laughs> Columbus discovering America, making friends with the Indians. <laughs> <laughs> Your whole world is bullshit. <laughs> so might I suggest Monday Night Raw. Oh, pro wrestling, that's gay. Oh, homophobia, that's a hate crime. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Incredible. One guy, he actually said to me once, he goes, oh, pro wrestling, that's like the gayest thing ever. I'm like, mm, clearly you've never seen two penises touching, because for my money, <laughs> you're gonna go like, like pound for pound, that's gotta be like the gayest thing ever. <laughs> And end to end, too, like the penises are kissing. It's like, <laughs> like their little penis lips, just like, like, and slowly, like spaceships about to crash into each other. Like, oh my God. Oh no, this is gonna be really gay. Oh no. Mwah. Man, it's probably the gayest thing ever. Oh, God, they have their shirts off. It's like, fucking relax. <laughs> so leave John Cena out of it. <laughs> but my absolute favorite, man, my absolute favorite, somebody said to me once, they're like, oh, pro wrestling? It's better when I was 12. I'm like, dude, you were better when you were 12. <laughs> you were. And try to find that person. Try to find that lonely little 12-year-old inside of you, the one sitting in the corner of your heart sad and staring at the wall. The one who's saying, why won't you let me watch wrestling anymore? <laughs> it's better now than ever and I'm missing it. Cause you're so worried about what other people think about you. Here, do you wanna know? I know. Do you wanna know? Do you wanna know what other people are thinking about you? I know what it is. Guess what they're thinking? Mm. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. No thing. Do you want to know why? Because they're too worried, wondering what you're thinking about them. Do you see? It's a sickness we all have. <laughs> There's no time to judge other people. We're all too terrified. So my thing is, be who you are, like what you like, and never worry. That is what pro wrestling means to me. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming tonight. You were wonderful. I'm Matt McCarthy, Vince Averill, thank you very much. Keep it going for Matt.